Success in Cancun will not be uh, a global deal that is legally binding. Uh, nobody is expecting that, and indeed that's not on the table. What success would look like would be a series of decisions that the Conference of the Parties take and a series of new initiatives that are moved forward that would, across a range of issues, represent real progress. So, for example, in forestry. For the first time, we have the opportunity of a truly sort of global agreement on incorporating forestry. That's stopping deforestation, it's afforesting. And including that in climate considerations, in climate finance and so on. Success would look like progress on forests, progress on agriculture, progress on technology, principles of a new green fund, special considerations to small island states because they're suffering, special considerations to mountains, and to Africa because those are the ones that are really being affected. It also would help bring in private sector engagement much more than we've had in the past, and it would include carbon market reform. Another element of success would be a technology transfer to many developing countries. This is even more important than money. And the question is, how do you bring technology into countries? And of course, the World Bank plays a very, very central role in that uh, through, for example, the climate investment funds, where we are through the Clean Technology Fund, a $4 billion fund that's uh, leveraging $40 billion of clean investment. That's a way that technology is being brought into that. But more than that, uh, there's a need to build capacity in developing countries. Other issues that we're working on that we would regard an important component of success, carbon markets. Carbon markets uh, so far have brought about $25 billion to developing countries. And that has leveraged about $125 billion of investments in clean technology, which is very good. But at the moment, they're rather inefficient markets. They tend to go to just a few countries. And what we're trying to do is get reform of carbon markets and to push carbon markets into developing countries at the lower income end of the scale. And some very, very exciting things there. We are, for example, launching a partnership for market readiness, which will bring $100 million to help countries that are introducing their own carbon markets. So countries like China, and Chile, even Ukraine, Indonesia, are really wanting to create their own market-based solutions. So even although they rightly say, wait a minute, we didn't actually cause this problem, they're saying we want to be part of the solution and we want to tap into the opportunities of green growth.